What's going on, arcade nerds? I just finished another project. Another vector to go in the vector collection. Um, this machine never really existed, but it was hardware, it was software written for Tempest hardware. Uh, back in 1999, a guy by the name of Clay Cowgill, he made a multi-Tempest kit. Now, to this day, only Clay Cowgill owns the rights to his own software, so the only way for me to get that the game that was included in his kit was to buy a, 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 a Clay Calgill multi kit. So, after some time, I scrounged up some money because nowadays that, that kit's, you know, three, four hundred dollars. Um, and I got this Clay Calgill multi kit, and I now have a Tempest with an eight in one multi kit in it. Well, this kit plays Vector Breakout, and I wanted to make a dedicated Vector Breakout arcade machine. So, that's what I did, and I want to show you. I want to show you that in this video, but first I want to talk about um, something. A guy by the name of Tommy Harrow, Harrox, Harrow. I'm sorry, man. I, you know I, I I'm I'm terrible with with your last name. I mispronounced your last name before. Um, I was talking to him on the phone, and uh, he uh, he says, "Hey, well, anything you need?" And you know, what do you say when someone asks you that? You know, I don't know. Uh, Nothing, you know what I mean? I don't know. And uh, then we talked about desoldering irons and soldering irons and so on. And I says, oh yeah, I have this crappy pace. Um, and and then he reminded me, oh wait, that's the same guy that gave me a desoldering iron before. Well, turns out that, de that desoldering iron wasn't too good. Which, by the way, thank you. I mean, who does that? Who gives someone something like that? It's amazing. Well, anyways, um, long story short, uh, I mentioned something about how I used to be a paste guy. I used to love paste desoldering irons. I swear by them. Well, I kind of changed my mode of thinking. I uh, um, I worked for a guy uh, once a year in Tennessee, and uh, he bought an FR Hacko FR 400, and um, that desoldering iron was so amazing that it put my paste to shame. So. Me and him, me and me and Tommy, we were talking about. Yeah, you know, I like the FR four hundred. I says it was too expensive. I said, you know, one of these days, I was actually seriously, seriously, like like recently, debating on what game I could sell so I can have enough money to buy an FR four hundred. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they're like a thousand five hundred dollars. And uh, so you know, he said, well, is there anything second to that? And it's oh man, well the FR three hundred one is just as good. The only difference between the FR three hundred one, the FR four hundred, is uh, the portability. Really, you know. Um, and, and anyways, so we ended our conversation. Uh, he, he needed help with something. I forget what it was. He needed help with something getting fixed. But anyways, um, and so you know, I kind of forgot about it. And then he sent me a text. And it said, "Hey, uh, check your check your mail between Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or whatever day it was." So, uh, okay, I didn't think much of it again, and uh, um, in the mail, <laughs> I got uh, a Hacko uh, FR three hundred one. He he uh, sent it to me, and. Uh, Honestly, honestly, I uh, I got it and uh, I got a little emotional. I opened the package and I actually cried. <laughs> um, that's a big deal, man. That's a big deal for me. You, you know, this is... I have made arcade stuff my life. And this is all I do, all I think about. And there's certain things that... Um, you know, you, you don't want to spend the money on or you don't have the money or whatever. And it's just... So it's really cool. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tommy. But uh, yeah, I want to show you my my uh, my existing solder soldering stuff, and then I want to show you what the the FR three hundred three hundred one can do. Well, right here is the Hacko, and uh, but I wanted to show you some things that um, what I what I've used over the years, and uh, I suppose it's kind of like. Remember when you were a kid and you had your Sega Genesis or you had your Nintendo or whatever? Whatever console you had, it was like a war between all the other kids in school. Oh no, the Sega's the best, because that's the one I have. I think that's kind of the way it was with, with me and Pace. Um, 
I, you know, right here, which this is broken. This is my very first um, desoldering station that that actually worked. I had one before it, and it was like some cheap Chinese knockoff. This no longer works. The pump went bad, but I have used this desoldering station for probably 15 years, and it's always been. It always ran well, and I just can't. I can't. I can't. I can't make myself throw it away. <laughs> but uh, anyways, the pump failed, so I've been using this one down here. Now this one down here, um, by the way, this is like this is about 30 years old, and this is about 25 years old. And uh, uh, this is the 25 year old one. I bought that for around 300 bucks on eBay. They're they're still going for that price. These old paces. Well, anyways. Um, I said something about, hey man, this stupid heating element in this in this gun went bad, and uh, they no longer make these heating elements, and you know it cost me two hundred dollars, two hundred damn dollars, to replace this heating element, and and I ended up replacing it, and the new old stock heating element I put in died like a week later, so I was so ups so 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 pissed because I was going like ten years at a time on these heating elements, or however long it was, it was a long time, years. And so I ended up having to buy another one, and uh, and you know they won't, they no longer make these tips, so I'm finding new old stock tips for this stupid gun. And anyways, Tommy, he um, uh, I mentioned that to him way back when, and he says, hey, I got a desoldering iron, and he said something about he doesn't like it or something like that. So so I he says, can I send it to you? And I says, yeah, sure, of course. <laughs> yeah, why not? You know, and he sent me this guy right here. This is it's it's called blackjack, but it's actually it's it's actually a knockoff Hacko. Does, does this look familiar to any of you guys? Maybe the Hacko 470 or something like that. It's very much it's basically a ripoff of Hacko, but um, but the parts are not compatible with each other, so you really can't swap the parts between each other. Anyways, this sucks. It absolutely sucks. It really 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 sucks. L literally, it doesn't work very well. Uh, but the iron itself works great. As a matter of fact, ever since ever since uh, Tommy gave me this, I've used this iron every single day. Every single day. And it works great. I, uh, you know, I, I mean, I'll leave that on eight hours at work. I'll take it home and leave it on, you know, fall asleep and leave it on sometimes, I know. Um, and uh, so, you know, that was really great. I appreciate that, you know. And so I ended up talking to Tommy and, uh, you know, somehow the hacko thing came up. And this is the FR-301. Uh, now he also bought bought me a stand here. You know what, I'm going to turn this on. This little button turns it on. Doesn't take long. I want to give you an example of how well this Hacko works. Now, don't get me wrong, this old Pace works great too. But I don't. I, but there's something different about this Hacko. The, uh, it acts just like the FR-401. Matter of fact, the FR, or FR-400 I should say. Is it 401 or 400? One or the other. But um, the only, really, the only difference is um, on the 400, the the gun is similar to similar to this. It does not have the the uh, vacuum pump built into the gun. It's actually on the 400. It's built into the base like this, and it has you know a couple little bells and whistles with the temperature and things like that. Uh, this is a more basic version, and it has the temperature adjustment on the bottom you can tell you the, temp the temperature right here and he says the numbers uh, and uh, you know what I, I don't care I'm not that that's fine I, you know, with these things I usually turn them mostly all the way up anyways because it's not just temperature it's, it's, it's your dwell time also um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah this is actually just as good as the as the new one is that you know is the bigger one it's just just a little bit of convenience that's why I wanted the, the big 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 bad boy you know what uh, Let's see here. I'll give you an example of how well this works. I love this thing. Okay. Here's a spot I already desoldered some things on. This is for a uh, socket. This is the socket on a GORF board for the speech. Okay. And I need to replace this socket anyway, so I was experimenting with it just to see how it works. Okay. 
Okay, so let's find something. Let's go with this one all the way, all the way right there. You see it? If you can see that in the camera or not, but that's cleared. Quick as shit. See it? Boom. And uh, for those of you that do this eight hours a day, you might realize how how uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for one of where am I at in the camera? I'm gonna go for these three right here. See them in a row. Uh, for those of you that do this eight hours a day. You may understand that it's very frustrating with a crappy uh, desoldering iron. All three of those are clear. And, uh, and you know, I always use the pace, and I thought, well, the pace desoldering iron, that is the, that's, I always thought that, that's the one to use. And all those little problems with clogging and all that, that's just, that's just what comes with it. That's just how it is. Well, this sucker doesn't clog. I love it. Anyways, <clears throat> okay, let's let's skip over all this crap and let me show you what you know. This what I oh, you know what? You know, someone asked me to. I know this. I know this sounds this sounds basic. I know this sounds simple. I know this sounds stupid. But uh, someone asked me to draw like a schematic or give an example of how to wire up coin door lights, and uh, I'm going to do that real quick. Okay. Um, now with different different manufacturers of arcade machines, uh, the coin door bulbs are going to be different. And there's two major physical differences. One is a bayonet base. And the bayonet base is going to have a metal can on the bottom, little nubs that come out, and a base that looks something like that. I am a terrible artist but does that does that make sense it's going to be your bayonet style and you're going to have another type that was right here's your bulb and the glass is going to continue down here and go like that and there's going to be two wires if I were to draw it from this side you'd see a wire over here and you see a wire on the other side does that make sense Anyways, that's that's the blade style. Now these now there's different um, numbers that are on these bulbs. One is five five five, one six one, one nine four, uh, forty seven. There's different numbers for each bulb, and depending on on what bulb you want to use, um, you can Google what voltage that number goes to. Some of them are fourteen volts. Some of them are twelve volts. Some of them are six point three volts. Now the 12 and the 14 are interchangeable, uh, but <clears throat> the, the 6.3, if you put a 6.3 volt in a 12 volt socket, it'll burn twice as bright and burn out, usually in the first, first hour, it'll burn out. So, um, if you want to wire, wire up your coin door to, a, to its own power supply, all you do is you get, that's going to be my filament for a bulb. Okay, you get two of them, wire them up just like this. One of these is going to go to ground, and this one is going to plus 5 volt. Okay, this is your coin door. You're going to wire them up in, this is called um, um, parallel. Okay, so. Uh, maybe to help you visualize it uh, a little better, I'm going to do it this way. Okay, so here's your ground. Right here is your plus five. Now this would be now this is your plus five on your power supply. If you're running a switching power supply, you connect that right to your power supply. Now if if the bulbs you want to run are 12 volt bulbs then you need to connect this to your 12 volts instead okay and ground is the same is the same as the ground on your power supply depending how uh, your machines wired you may need to run this ground all the way to the power supply or you can ground it 
at the you know a, you know a, a similar ground somewhere else. Um, matter of fact, you can actually use the coin return line as the ground. Um, what else? Oh, I will I will say this. Uh, um, if you want to use LEDs, and I love LEDs and coin doors. Um, see, um, normally the average coin reject button is red, right? That little clear red button right there. Normally this is red, right? Now if you put a, a white bulb behind it, it will filter out all the all the colors of, of, of that white. It'll filter out the blue, it'll filter out the green, and only let red pass through. Okay? But if you were to replace this with a red LED instead of a white LED, um, it this this red will allow red to pass through, and this will be brighter than it, this will look brighter than if you were to use a white LED. So um, when I do put LEDs in coin doors, I do like to go with red, uh, or sometimes these are amber. Sometimes if you have a HAP control, these are blue, you know, and so on. But uh, uh, red looks, in general, looks a lot brighter than if you were to use a white LED. But okay, so. Let me talk about um, um, my new game. Okay, this is my living room, and as you can see, uh, things are getting out of hand. Um, <laughs> um, I don't have enough space in here. I'm, I'm hoping someday I'll have an addition. Um, actually, seriously, I've talked about it for years now, but I want to get really serious this year. Maybe start a brick by brick I'll do it myself uh, addition even if it takes me two years I don't care but I, I, you know anyways so this is overflow these are some vector games this is that color asteroids I did this is to a zap it wouldn't fit in the arcade room there's a Stargate that I was debating on selling there's my Dragon's Lair but uh, what do you call it this is my my own art I, I did that myself uh, I did this art in um, Microsoft Paint, so um, it is what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, let me try to pan across here. Vector breakout. But um, yeah, so I mean, this is just I made this in Microsoft Paint. It is what it is. It's not vectorized. Um, I was a little disappointed with the uh, overlay, although it happens. Have you guys ever got an overlay that uh, it was a little it had a little crease in it, right out of, right out of the box? Let's say you get a brand new control panel overlay or side art or whatever, and uh, it'll have a little crease, and you have to fix it all the way down. And it's, and it's not it's not because you know I've been putting on. Uh, overlays and stuff like that for years years I have lots of experience hundreds hundreds several hundreds of overlays I've put on but every once in a while you get one that right out of the box like for example I got one from um, uh, this old game that was stored by a friend of mine he, you know, he gave it to me and, and it was rolled up for a couple years sometimes when you unroll it a uh, certain section of the overlay will have a Anyways, there's bubbles on here, which kind of kind of tick me off, but you know, hey, it is what it is. Uh, I'm going to. Oh, by the way, if you want to, I can uh, I can send you these files. I don't know if you really if you're crazy enough to want it, like like me or not, but you know. Okay, I'm going to turn the lights off. I'm going to show you something cool. Yeah, yeah, you like that? That is um, <clears throat> behind this panel. Uh, well, first off, this is a Tempest Control panel. I do have this was one that was uh, converted to uh, another game. Now, the one that came on this panel I, on, on this machine, I saved, and all the holes are in the correct locations. But this already had a bunch of holes drilled through it and everything. I says, you know what? I'm going to patch up those holes anyways. I might as well cut out. See what I did is I cut the panel all the way across and made a giant hole 
okay and that hole was shaped like the bricks on the on the on the control panel there and I put color changing LEDs behind there to kind of emphasize the specific colors you know so it kind of sort of animated it I think it's pretty cool but uh, okay now the lights are off let me, you know let me hold on I'm gonna turn this lights off in the kitchen maybe it'll there no reflection now now vector breakout uh, is basically it's breakout it plays exactly like breakout it's it's it, I have a lot of trouble with it it's hard I mean I, you know I don't try and you know uh, I have a set for for uh, three man or you know three guys maybe maybe I should set it higher uh, I as of yet I have still not gone through an entire layer I've gone down to one brick about five or six times now and uh, you know obviously it plays just like breakout uh, you know, uh, and, and once you hit the very top, your ball starts, you know, you know, increases in speed. And so eventually it's going, you know, fast as hell and it's just hard to keep up, you know. I always did love these, love these ball and paddle games. I don't know why. I, I, I like, I, you know, I still like Pong, <laughs> you know. Um, Arkanoid was probably, you know, one of the best. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you know, so I, I like this kind of game already. I love this kind of game. Um, it was, you know, I remember playing it on the Apple II. They had an Arkanoid clone on the Apple II. Uh, it was just, you know, that was part of, part of what I thought was fun back in the day, you know. And I, it still is. I know some people might dog on this, but, you know, I like it. I don't care. All right, so let's, let's give this a little, a little play here. Let's see if I could somehow magically clear one entire screen. I'm thinking of things, thinking of something to say. Should I say something on camera? The camera's rolling. Do you guys want to hear my voice? Do you guys want it silence so you can uh, play the game? All right, I'm going to kill myself. All right, I'm not going to say a damn word. Let's start over. that not the best not my greatest I've gotten on uh, 90 93 uh, on this I believe not but I believe um, see my uh, there's a chip on this board called the EROM E A R O M and <clears throat> it was an early um, flash flash ROM chip that was on Atari games Anyways, the EROM chip is is uh, is bad on this, and it doesn't save the high score. But uh, 
93 it saves for some reason <laughs> but if I hit 95 like I did the other day then um, then it, it doesn't recognize it and it erases it I don't know that doesn't make sense to me but even the, even the 3 on the 93 if it shows up you can actually see it's messed up anyways it's my EROM it's my EROM chip that's a 3 but yeah so you know sooner or later I'll put I'll put an uh, a better EROM chip, a working EROM chip in here. Uh, it's not the end of the world. But um, yeah, so if you guys like this kind of stuff, please subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down below. Um, you know, um, thanks again, Tommy. You know, I, 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 I like, I appreciate all you arcade nerds. I really do. I know it sounds, may sound kind of fluffy or whatever, but uh, uh, honestly, uh, I get, I get, um, mostly through Facebook, I get people all day, every day, asking me random questions. And I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I, I, I enjoy knowing that, oh, you got that working, or whatever. And so, you know, um, by the way, I am Jason Cop on, uh, Facebook. Uh, if you check out Facebook, you'll see a big picture of my ugly face. So, you know, uh, it shouldn't be too hard to find. Alright, guys, have a good one. Subscribe!